speak up loud. Um, I, like, I love the video from Bong about the forecast and the risk information um, in your collective experience. Are there any big gaps in risk information that uh, primary producers would love to be filled? So the, the question was, um, in the collective wisdom of the panel, are there any gaps in risk information that um, you'd think producers would like to see filled? I think there's a, a really big gap in um, data on property values, and that's the um, thing that sort of underpins wealth creation in farming and gives people comfort in, ta in taking risks and banks comfort in uh, advancing finance. All the base data is sitting in the state value of general databases, but uh, very rarely is it collated into a meaningful, accessible data set. And any other comments from the panel? On that one? No? Okay. Other questions? Yeah, please. A question to Mark Carroll. And sorry, if you could just say who you are and where you're from, that'd be great. Mike, two questions. Did you have a set of rules of thumb on high risk clients that you were wary of lending to? And what were the other things that Bravo did intelligently that stole so much of the market share of the other state? The, um, the, there were a lot of things, I think, that uh, Rabo did that gave them a real run in their first 10 years following the acquisition of PIVA. And I think, um, you know, some banks have replicated that. Um, NAB's replicated it very strongly. And it's a deep focus and specialisation uh, on agriculture. So that means that you've got good frontline bankers that um, really understand and just focus on, on farming and, and agriculture. Uh, their boss and their boss's boss also has that same focus. Importantly, the credit department has that same focus. So I think that's probably just as important as those changes and greater flexibility in lending policy. And the rules of thumb? Uh, rules of thumb are really dangerous, Graham. <laughs> and I'm a bit rusty on those. You've got... Um, can't hold sitting in front of you. Have a chat to him afterwards. Look, I think there's a major skill gap. And, um, you know, just lo looking at some of the uh, things that blow up in the media, I was talking to Andrew Fisher earlier about, you know, the, around debt. I mean, we had someone from Ernst Young talking about debt being a major problem in agriculture this morning. Now, the, the stats don't support that. Um, but I do think that you know, um, the level of skill in some areas where, and, you know, I think the people that get a pedestal in the media tend to be probably at the lower end of skills in that area. Uh, and we, it's impossible to expect those people to become proficient in using, you know, Excel like you do, let alone stepping up beyond that to add on a, a simple bit of software that gives you more powerful um, analytical ability. But there are people like Graham around that can do that for them, and it's a pity that they don't access those people um, a lot more than they do. Pull in Mark um, Bergman on that as well. So, what's your experience with the ability to train people or get that skill level up on oh, speaking, risk analysis? Speaking, it's a it's a tough call. You know, we we teach in a science faculty, and um, to this day, you can do a degree in biology. Um, uh, even a pra relatively practical degree in biology through the science faculty and do no maths, no stats, and no quantitative methods whatsoever and, mm. and graduate with a science degree. Um, we, we put, I remember about 10 years ago, to some of our colleagues the notion that this, this just, just some, some, some fluency with numbers is fundamental to this business. Uh, and uh, the response is, well, if you want your people, to, if you want our people to do stats, your people have to do cell biology. You know, it's, the, the, there's this, it, it's, it's insane. This is the, this is the language of, by which you understand problems and solve them. And mm. uh, if you can't do it yourself, you find somebody, but you don't not do it. 
I guess maybe, um, Neil, if you want to make a comment, because obviously a lot of the work that you're doing is making your analytical work much more accessible through the, the website and maybe some of the challenges you've had in translating what must be pretty complicated uh, forecasting models into very accessible visuals and so on. Yeah, that, that's always been a, been a challenge, uh, Joe, and it's, um, it's probably is, uh, our seasonal work has come on the back of uh, a weather forecast, and weather forecasts are deterministic. It will be 25, it will rain, on, on certain days. So that's been part of the, uh, the challenge, the, the discussion around probabilities and so forth. There's lots of, lots of challenges there. Concerns about the accuracy, just the seasonal forecasts aren't accurate enough, we hear, we hear that. But um, I guess one thing, when, when you do get big swings in, um, um, in El Nino, towards El Nino, La Nina and, and so forth, that's when the forecasts tend to be uh, more accurate. It tends to be, that lines up when the impacts are stronger both in terms of temperatures and, 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 and rainfall. So it is like a lot of these seasonal forecasts, the, the monthly forecasts we've got now, you know, sometimes the skill's not going to be high, um, uh, but it is uh, the sort of tools you use over a long period, um, if they're used well and with, um, in, in a risk-based framework, um, then, you know, we do believe they do pay dividends. And maybe just a final quick comment from Andrew on that subject. So again, the people that you're working with, are they able to you know, use these sorts of analytical techniques to help them interact with you? Oh, as, a, as a general rule, most farmers don't do the analysis on their business. They, you know, it takes a lot of work to actually pull all the background that we need to to, uh, to do the cr correct risk assessment. So there is a, an absolute um, real lack of knowledge at the farm gate, but also of, of the farmers themselves engaging the right type of external services to, to do that on their behalf. And oh, I concur with everybody else. It's a, something that needs a lot more investigation in helping the farmers get those sorts of skills into their business. Okay, well, thank you very much. We are right on time, so I will have to wrap us up. So if, we can, if you can join me in thanking Professor Mark Bergman, Neil Plummer, Mike Carroll and Andrew Trotter.